All right, I will call the Wednesday, January 19th, 2022 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Uh, Joe is not here, so could I impose on Ryan to take the attendance, please? Absolutely. Uh, Chairman Roberts. Here. Mr. Chair Allard is here. Clerk Hammer. Members, no. Commissioner Hughes. Commissioner nope. Oikel. Here. Commissioner Dean, I know he usually calls. So. Commissioner Homicki. No. no. Commissioner Edwards. Yes. Here. Commissioner Vieira. Here. Commissioner Drake. Commissioner Liam Bruni. Here. And Commissioner Thompson. All right. So that's uh, five regular members and one alternate. So I'll seat uh, Peter. Um, just to kind of let everybody who's from the public here know, um, the two public hearings that we had scheduled for tonight have both asked to be continued to our next meeting. So um, I'd like to go out of order and uh, ask if someone would make a motion to continue the opening of public hearing 3,521Z Lucas Kiriakos and public hearing 3,921Z Brian Cousins to uh, Tuesday, February 1st, 2022 at 7 o'clock p.m. So motion we'll... made, Mr. Chairman, George. I'll second. Okay. All right. Motion made by George, seconded by Ryan. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Abstentions? Okay. So those two hearings will not go forward tonight. They will be at our next meeting, Tuesday, February 1st. Um, and it will probably once again be on Zoom. So that takes us to item 3.1, a discussion regarding reconstruction of Walcott Hill Road from Jordan Lane to Victoria Road in Hartford. And I would invite our town engineer, Derek Greger, to uh, speak on this matter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I have stated, my name is Derek Greger, I'm town engineer. I'm here tonight with Bill Anderson and Josh Iannotti from VHB, who is our consultant on the project, um, to discuss a, a work that we're planning to do along Walker Hill Road from Jordan Lane, extending north uh, to Victoria Road in Hartford. Um, just to give you a little bit of history on the project, in May of 2018, the town submitted an application for local transportation capital improvement program funds, which are known as LOTSIP. Um, with that program, state funding is 100% of the state funding is used for construction costs and the town funds uh, the design costs uh, to get to construction. Uh, so in October, 2019, we were awarded initially $2.7 million. Um, during design, we made some changes in the design based on soil conditions that were encountered during test pits. Um, and we got increased to about $3.3 million in funding right now for the reconstruction work. In addition, um, the town was allocated $500,000 in state grant and aid funds to include installation of new streetlights along the project limits. So we uh, have retained VHB for survey design and permitting services um, using local road funds. Um, we're here tonight because the project's at the final design stage and we're planning to issue a bid solicitation soon. So we just wanted to come in, um, give, you, give you some information and let you know about the project because it's pretty large. And uh, we presented to the town council last night. So they got the same presentation last night. So they're aware of where we're going with the work. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Bill Anderson. He's the project manager from BHB and he can provide you with some additional information. Thanks, Derek. Let me see if I can share my screen. Um, I'd like to share my screen to um, go through this presentation here. Let's see. It says host disabled parts participant screen sharing. Can you allow me to share screen, please? Then I think you're on mute. 
I think that Did you Peter should be that? able to now. Um, okay, there we go. All right, we're in business, perfect. All right, well, again, thank you everyone. Um, I'll have a brief presentation that I'll go through and, and at the end, look forward to taking the questions that you might have. So this is for the reconstruction of Wilkerty Road and Franklin Ave Avenue. This um, is the LOTSIP project um, funded by the state. Um, so let's start with our presentation overview. So first I'll um, provide a, a project overview. Second, I'll discuss the proposed improvements. Third, I'll go through the next steps. And at the end, I look forward to taking your questions. Starting with a project overview. So this project uh, begins at the intersection of Wilkert Hill and Jordan Lane. It extends north to the intersection with Victoria Road in the city of Hartford. Uh, the project is approximately 1,400 feet in length. Um, this is a mixed-use corridor with uh, most of residential units on the west side of the roadway. We do have uh, two state facilities on the east side of the corridor, the uh, Department of Corrections and Department of Labor. There's also a park and ride lot um, near the intersection of Wilkert Hill Road and Jordan Lane. Average daily traffic, that's the um, number of vehicles that travel in this roadway per day, is approximately 5,600 vehicles. Um, these counts were done back in 2018, and this accounts for vehicles traveling in both directions. Um, this is a major bus route for CT Transit. Uh, they also use uh, the Department of Labor um, parking lot as a layover area for their buses. So as Derek mentioned, um, the town did receive two separate funding sources uh, for this project. Uh, the first is from through the LOCSIC program. That's approximately $3.3 million. At our final design stage, our uh, construction our cost estimates approximately $3.5 million. Just want to note here that the actual amount the town will receive will be the, based on the lowest bid received from contractors, plus an additional 20% for construction oversight and contingency. So in addition to the lots of fund, the town did receive $500,000 from DECD for lighting along the project corridor. And our estimate currently is $308,000. The design for this project is funded by the town. So in terms of the um, lane configuration now uh, on Wilco Hill currently, there are two lanes in the northbound direction one lane in the south, southbound direction with on-street parking. These lanes are excessive, excessively wide. Um, there are lack of sidewalk ramps out there. Um, for pedestrian crossing the, the roadway, it's a very long distance um, with unprotected crosswalks. And for anyone who drives this road and knows that the pavement is in pretty poor condition, hence the reason why this project is warranted. So on this sheet, I'm showing a lot of information, but I just want to really illustrate what, what we're doing for the proposed improvement. So currently the um, pavement thickness, uh, the pavement depth on our, or the pavement cross section of Walker Hill, we have four inches of hardness asphalt placed on 12 inches of concrete base. Beneath that concrete base are, is unsuitable, some type of unsuitable material, which is your typical you know, stone mixing with some type of clay. So what we'll be doing will be over excavating beyond that concrete base, removing some of that um, unsuitable material. Then we're gonna backfill that excavated area with suitable material and then overlay the roadway with six inches of hot mixed asphalt. So this, uh, this is a plan view of our improvements here. So for quick orientation, uh, to your left, we have um, Jordan Lane and we're gonna be working away from Jordan Lane in the south towards uh, Victoria Road in, uh, in the north in Hartford. So in terms of what these colors represent for improvement, let me just start at the top of my screen here and go through these colors. So what's shown here in orange, that's us replacing sidewalks to either meet ADA or replacing sidewalks that are in poor condition. We'll be replacing all the driver aprons um, at each driveway. And then uh, the grass strip or your snow shelf, we'll be re restoring those. I'm planting new grass in, the, in this, in this uh, snow shelf here. We'll be replacing in the uh, carbon through the entire project area. So the carbon will be replaced with granite carbon. In terms of the striping of the roadway, we're going to be providing a five foot bike lane, a four foot buffer, 11 foot travel lane, a two foot shoulder. This existing median will remain. We're replacing the carbon. The trees will remain. 
or installing 14 light poles within the median throughout the project area. So this is what's shown in the red. These are the, light, the, the lights we'll be installing throughout the project area. The northbound direction uh, is essentially mimics the southbound in terms of the, the lane configuration. I just want to note here that we actually narrow the roadway in the northbound section by about eight and a half feet. And in turn, we've picked up an additional, additional green space between the existing sidewalk and the uh, curbing. Where, where, where possible, we are actually in, um, planting a few, uh, we, we were planting some additional trees. And in terms of meeting uh, what we call uh, MS4 permit requirements, or essentially just meeting the requirements as best as we can um, um, from DEP that the town is required to meet, we're installing what we call a low impact um, 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 development through the project here. Essentially what these are, this is a filtration bed. So what happens is that water would run off this roadway here and there's this chamber that's filled with um, filtration material. So the water runs through here and then that is connected to this downstream catch basin. So that water is treated before it enters the storm drainage system through the project area. So we have a total of four bus stops um, through the project area. So what we're gonna be providing is a pull-off area for, at each of those bus stops. And this um, pull-off area will be a concrete pad. So we have two in the northbound direction and two in the southbound direction. So essentially what we discussed in the previous sheet we, is essentially just showing here in this sheet. So nothing really different here. Again, you know, proper, you know, additional green space, we're adding trees where possibly these trees through here, where parts possibly this thing in the project corridor. And onto the next sheet, um, the project ends at the intersection with Victoria Road. So in addition to replacing sidewalk ramps um, at this intersection, we're also um, installing um, pedestrian buttons um, through this project here. Um, sorry, at this intersection here. I, I talked about the um, low impact um, um, system that we're installing. Essentially what it is, I, as I said, it's a chamber. So imagine here in this picture, your water runs down the um, gutter, it enters the system, it gets filtered, and then there's a pipe connecting the system to this catch basin here. So that's really how it functions. As for the lighting, again, a lot of stuff in the sheet. I just want to bring your attention to this detail here. So the light will be 20 feet high. We'll be installing double luminaires on, on the light pole. And again, we have 14 of those lights installed in the median through the corridor. So this is an example of what we're currently proposing. Uh, this is the uh, black matte finish um, um, structure that, um, lighting that we're showing here. And then for this project, we install lighting you know, back to back. So this is just one shown here, but for our project, it would be lights installed back to back on a pole. I think there's some discussion as to whether this would be the final type of light that we show for this project. But at this point, this is what we, we are proposing. As for the next step, uh, we're in the process of securing um, easements. Uh, we, uh, actually, we just have one easement and a, and a couple of rights that we're working through at this point. Um, Jordan Lane is actually a state road, and because we're doing work within Jordan Lane, we need to go through the, the process of obtaining an encroachment permit for this project. So what we're doing as a designer is essentially um, getting all the pre-approval um, work in place. Once the contractor comes on board, he or she will obtain the actual encroachment permit. For the signal work that will be done at the intersection of Victoria Road and, and, and Franklin Avenue, that requires a permit from the Office of State Traffic Administration. So we're current, that's already been submitted to, the, to them and we're working through the approval process for, for that signal. We're anticipating submitting the plans, um, the well, final documents to CROG who actually over, oversees the um, LOTSI program sometime within the, the next week or so for this project. Um, given the schedule, we are confident that we, the construction for this project will be completed this year. So with that, uh, our hand of our presentation, um, Derek, I'm not sure if you want to add anything before we actually take questions. No, Bill, I think you did a good yeah, job. I have one now, Mr. Chairman, George. Um, okay. I'm curious, I'm not an engineer, but I've had a lot of experience in planning for 40 or 50 years, maybe. And uh, I follow engineering stuff to some degree. Why why do you have to dig up the concrete base that was there probably, is it deteriorated? 
Yes, it's a company. pretty solid thing, isn't it? I wondered why. I'm just curious. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so initially when the, the road was constructed, the concrete base was in pretty good shape. But over the years, what that happened is that we have had, you know, you two of the companies, you know, coming through there, they've done trench cuts. And there's, you know, when they actually construct the, the concrete pavement, there are joints in that pavement. So over time, those joints get wider and wider. So if you drive out there right now, what you'll probably see are these cracks across the roadway. And those are the cracks in the, the concrete pavement that's reflecting through the surface of that uh, roadway. So, so, so know, it has about, deteriorated. That's what it you're has, saying, yes, It has, that's correct, yes. Uh, cracks and then digging uh, from time to time over the... 40 or uh, 60 years or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I have a question. What what's the northern limits of the concrete pavement? Is it at that intersection of Victoria or is is it bituminous as you go north? It keeps going through to Hartford. The the concrete pavement does? That's correct, yeah. It it comes so we're meeting Franklin Avenue. Do you know what the depth of that is? It's plus or minus uh, twelve inches. I guess. I guess I just have a concern with meeting twelve inches of concrete pavement with six inches of bit. It just seems like you know, at, at least at the intersection of uh, Victoria, I would probably, you know, if I'm designing it, probably over design that northern section of the bituminous to like an equivalent to what that concrete pavement is. Otherwise, um, what you end up, especially in the northbound, not necessarily southbound, because you're going in the direction of more rigid to less rigid, but um, as you're traveling northbound, you're on a more flexible surface, six inches of it, you're gonna hit a rut right as you hit that concrete pavement. Um, but if you, if you step that rigidity up as you go north, like increase that bituminous to like a foot a bit, um for you know at least a section you could potentially mitigate some of that cracking that you might end up seeing it's you know it's not something that would happen right away but you know five to ten years you, you could end up with a pretty sizable rut there especially when you got a lot of through traffic going there so i'm gonna offer any recommendations i guess i'm looking for that did you um just one one little question on the gas. I think you, you hit mute. mute yourself. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm I'm doing the thing where you hold the space bar here. Let me hit the. All right. Yeah, um, we'll figure, we'll figure, figure this out this. after four years. <laughs> no, I was holding the space bar and then I let go and I I clicked on Google Earth. Um, all right. So the the gas station at the southern end. Did we look? at all into closing the driveway that leads to to Wolcott Hill, the, the curb cut? We we did not. I, I we um no we didn't actually I think we thought it was you know it was important to, for us to maintain that driveway for access in and out of the um, parking lot um directly onto Wilkett Hill Road. Um, yeah, the, the only thing I would offer is just in way of sort of observation there is that that island gap is used as a cheater for lots of traffic in that intersection. Uh, you could, if you go on Google Earth, you'll see the the, the tire squeal marks, <laughs> uh, but you, you're able to see um, the traffic pattern of the people who are cutting through the intersection. So. So where your mouse is now, people are, you know, if you're pretending you're going to go into the gas station, but you're really going to go into the intersection and then take a right because you want to, you want, you just want to skip through all that traffic. That's a very common thing, and also a lot of people doing UEs through there. Um, so just, just an observation that I made living in town. Uh, but if you want to um, possibly take this as an opportunity to close up that island or at least make it a you know traversable yet deterrent to a cut through uh, it's just one more observation that I've made driving through there that's it for me okay yeah thank right. you 
we, we have been in touch um, with the property owner and that's something we could broach with them. Um, we are, as far as their access, we are narrowing the, um, the concrete apron quite a bit from what it is now. It's going to be reduced, um, I think to 30 feet wide. It's much wider than that currently. So it'll be a lot tighter. Um, generally, my experience is with properties on the corner like that, particularly commercial, that they'll look at a closure on one of the side streets as a you know reduction in the value of their property. So I'm not sure they're going to be agreeable, but that's that's something we can discuss with them and see if that is something they would consider. Yeah, it's not a particularly lively gas station now, but if it ends up being one in the future, I can see where keeping that curb cut would be beneficial to them. But you know, anything, even if it's like a traversable island or something that's directional, you know, you, you can make it so that it's a deterrent for people traveling north and trying to cut or people trying to take that U-turn. You make it a directional so that you can only go north on Wilkin Hill Road, something something like that. And you could do that just with the existing stamped island there. If you just extend that and give it like a little uh, knife's edge sort of up at the up at that northern end. You could potentially deter anybody from that southern ramp uh, or little bypass there on the intersection. You can deter anybody because they'd have to take like an extra awkward wide sort of turn. Um, so just I was just curious if we looked into that at all, because if you like I said, if you go on Google Earth and you hit Street View, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about in terms of the tire marks and what people do at that intersection. I don't, yeah, I don't know exactly how common it is, but I know it's common enough that it's all over the pavement. So, thank you. All right, thanks. I, yeah, I have I, a question. Yeah, Mr. sure, Chairman. Yeah, uh, I'm just curious. Uh, I mean, I didn't know about this project. So is this uh, a betterment project? What's the need? to do this project? Is it overall maintenance of this stretch? Is it betterment? Is it a combination of both? Is it traffic? Uh, uh, I'm curious, what, what was the motivation behind this particular stretch of road being reconstructed at this time? Yeah, I mean, the primary reason was it's in extremely poor condition, uh, has been for a long time. Um, the town has been making, you know, temporary repairs for, for a while and Given the traffic volumes we have out there, which are, which are pretty high, um, it is also one of the major routes for CT transit. So for all those reasons, you know, the, the impetus of the project was to reconstruct the road section so we could get, get a safer, um, better travel way through there. I mean, this is looked as a looked at as a, a gateway as you enter or leave town. Um, so in addition to improving the structural conditions, it was also looking at more of a complete streets approach. Um, by adding bike lanes, by adding bus pull-off areas to, to get them more off the road, you know, reducing the two lanes in the northbound direction to one because only one is really needed and narrowing the road as part of a road diet to help with uh, traffic calming and um, reducing, you know, stormwater runoff, things of that nature. So, you know, it, it expanded into, into more of a complete streets project, but, um, you know, initially the impetus was just the poor pavement conditions. So, um, state funding through this program is available uh, for these types of projects. Um, they have a variety of types of projects, but or, you know, full reconstruction like this is one of them, which is why we, we put in the application, which at this point is already about three and a half years ago. So we're, we're anxious to, to get the project done. I would be interested in knowing if anyone has any concerns or comments about the light fixtures that are being proposed. You know, we're we were looking at the area and um, looking at something a little more utilitarian. Um, the, the fixtures are very similar to the ones if you've been at town hall that are out in the parking lot. Um, but just like to get feedback uh, if anyone you know has any thoughts on that. There, as mentioned, there are going to be double luminaires on 20 foot tall poles. Um, everything will be black in color. Um, the lighting right now is only in on the southbound lane. So on the west side of the road, there are street lights. There are, there are none on the um, east side of the road for the northbound direction. Whatever light is just whatever spills over from the other side of the road. So now we'd have them down the center and be able to light up you know, with the right of way um, adequately through this area. If anyone has anything they could offer on that, we're open to comments. No, I, I guess my 
thought is that they they look fine and that's a good location. I just hope they're easy to replace when people crash into them and knock them over. Yeah, that, that does happen. Um, and one of the things with this project is we're going to be putting in granite curb. If you've been out there, the bituminous curb, you know, with the plowing operations and the way they have to plow uh, gets beat up pretty badly. So this the whole area will be uh, granite, which, uh, you know, we, we, we lobbied for that as a kind of an extension of Franklin Avenue, which has granite curb. Um, so that should hopefully limit some of that. And uh, hopefully with the new you know pavement markings and such, that would be a better situation than we have out there now. Yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, having the islands is helpful. I've gone down Weathersfield Avenue a few times in the last year and found that to be kind of a horrifying experience. So I hope we can design to avoid that. So that lighting is not the same as what's on uh, going 99 North, right? Because there's, I know we have like some improvements that were done there it's more on the south hartford side not necessarily ours but um in terms of conformity with that design we're going with something different are you referring to silas dean highway uh north yeah ju like just at like that south hartford line there's we have a couple there's some decorative lighting and some streetscape and looks like you know something similar to the product that we're hoping to see, I think, on Walker Hill. But yeah, we didn't we didn't look at that area to see specifically what they did. It, you know, it is a block over. Um, it looks like they have they have some different it's, types of poles um, and some that are look a little bit more like acorn shaped on each yeah. side of the road. So yeah, we, we're doing something different. We really didn't look to match that. You know, seeing that it was a different different roadway from the one we're connecting to. Okay. All right, looks good. Does anybody else have any uh, comments or questions for Derek or uh, for the engineer? Virginia, this is Pete. I dropped out there for a while, but I got the gist of the answer that I was looking for. But I'm back in if um, if you're wondering. Okay, I do have a question. What's the what's the honeycomb? At that driveway. That is, oh, oops, sorry about that. That is the um, commercial driveway symbol. We're replacing the small section of the actual driveway just to make sure the grades tie back in. At yeah. number 38 as well? Yes, yes. So, so the honeycomb right. just means the, the deeper section? Yes, yeah, okay. that's correct. All right, good. Good stuff. Is that is that all you wanted to present tonight, or is there more? Yeah, that, that's all we had for the presentation. Um, more or less, just to bring it to your attention, get a little a little bit of feedback. So we appreciate you know, letting us come in and, and do that. And uh, like we said, we'll we'll continue moving forward and uh, look at some of the suggestions that were offered. And um, we're looking at this point to get construction done this this construction season. All right, great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thanks gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next two public hearing items have been continued. Uh, no other business, no minutes. Um, Denise, do you have a staff report? Uh, the only thing that I wanted to briefly mention is I did um, report last night to the town council on the moratorium uh, regarding uh, the cannabis establishments. So we did begin um, that discussion. Um, they've asked for uh, some additional information, which I will uh, present to them. I believe that they will um, have this again on their agenda in two weeks. Um, I didn't really get a clear sense at this point, you know, the, the direction that they wanted us to go in terms of crafting a regulation versus prohibiting the use. Um, but um, 
but we did get a lot of comments uh, to take into consideration. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm glad we're at least moving forward with that conversation just so that we can make sure everybody's clear on what, what their each other's opinions are. Um, anybody from the public wishing to make a comment on general matters of planning and zoning? Anybody in the public? Right. Uh, no correspondence. So in addition to the uh, Lucky Lou and the, the Walkett Hill Garage, what do you think we have on the agenda for the first? Um, I also have an application for a commercial vehicle at 61 Arrow Road. Um, it's for one vehicle. Um, and then I, I, I don't know that they're actually going to want to be on the, the next agenda, but we do have an application coming in. It was just approved from design review 657 Silestine. It's the former Rite Aid. Um, the International Institute of uh, Cosmetology recently purchased the building and they'll be seeking a change of use uh, from retail to uh, cosmetology yeah. school. Um, so I um, I don't think that they'll meet the deadline for the next meeting. No, and I think just for managing everybody's workload, it might be better if they didn't. Right. All right. Um, anything else anybody wants to uh, bring up tonight before we adjourn? If not, motion to adjourn. Motion. All right. Motion by Ryan. Second. Right. Motion by Ryan, second by George to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Did we set a record? Close. I think we did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. At least a modern day record. Yeah. 38 and minutes. I, I bet you all the other top five. <laughs> I think it is. I bet you all the other top five ones were ones where George wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> 46 years, this may be the fastest. <laughs> All right, everybody, All right. thank you so much. Yep. All right, thanks everyone, have a good evening. Take Bye care. Bye-bye.